Thank Dave, you. You're the man, Dave. Uh, keep enjoy. You, no one enjoys living life like you. I mean, you, you, I, I was laughing when Dave came on just real quick, and people were like, why is he laughing while Joe is introducing Dave? Because we before we started recording, Dave just mooned us on the camera. He did. <laughs> Oh no. Oh, cut. there it oh, is. De- oh, all right. That's <laughs> it. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to episode 30 of the NJ Multispecies Podcast. I am your host, Joe Santiago, and if you believe me or not, my partner, Chris Pereira, is here. Chris? Oh, I'm here, Joe. There he is. Silent Bob is here. Uh, We have a lot to talk about tonight. Uh, I was in Salmon River for four days. I drove back, immediately went to Virginia with Mark Madusky which uh, turned out to be a complete nightmare. Uh, and then we rushed back to Jersey to fish with the legendary Dave Awe, which was absolutely unbelievable. Dave is coming in here momentarily. Uh, real quick, Chris, I think you have the results from the Knee Deep Club tournament. Uh, yeah, so the Knee Deep Club had uh, had their last contest of the year, I believe, the walleye contest. Uh, it was an overnighter. Uh, we got... Oh, God, I'm going to butcher this guy's name. First place is Matus Dijduch. Good enough. Good job, Matus. And then, unfortunately, second place is a relative of them, so I'm going to butcher the last name again. It's Jack Dijduch. And uh, third place is our boy Kevin Cool from Lake Opac on Guide Service. I think I saw a post, actually. I think he was fishing with his parents. I asked Kevin Cool for a uh, Lake Pack on Guide Service fishing report, and I received back a picture of an eggplant. So, the fishing report for Lake Pack on is an eggplant. Uh, yeah, there was. I guess the fishing must have been tough because there is no fourth, fifth, or sixth place entries in that contest. Okay, uh, so fishing must be tough. Um, and the, uh, well, you know what? The the weather wasn't great. We got lucky. We got lucky on the um, fishing with Dave on the Delaware. Got lucky. We uh, sat in the rain for seven hours. Well, yeah, but dude, not anything compared to what other parts of New Jersey were dealing with. We were we got lucky because we were right in the middle of like this this uh, crevice, and like there was downpouring rain to the east, downpouring rain to the west, and we and that that weather just got sucked straight up and down, and we only. I mean, we got drizzled to very light rain on for, what, two hours maybe, three? A couple good hours. Off. And the fish shut, shut our fishing off. Well, it shut our fishing off, but we didn't have, I mean, looked like uh, they only had 18 entries probably because of the weather, I'm assuming, because they usually have double that at least. Well, we're going to bring Dave Law in here right now. After Dave Law leaves, uh, Max Wilson wants to come on to defend his honor uh, over me saying he was crying, but he was, so he I don't know what he's going to defend. Yeah. Also, Chris has uh, questions for Max about some fish that might be questionable. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I want to get everyone's side of the story. I don't want to accuse anyone of anything, and I take anything told to me with a grain of salt until I hear all sides of the story, so we're just... We'll, we'll figure it out. Okay, let's bring let's bring Dave all in here because Dave's the man. Yeah, let's do it. So our next guest has been fishing uh, for over sixty years. He's gained a pretty legendary following on the Delaware River. Uh, me and Chris had the honor of being able to fish on his boat for his own very first tournament of the year. Uh. It's my honor to introduce Mr. Dave Awe. Dave, Dave, what's up? Hey, guys. Good evening. How's everybody? Welcome, Dave. Welcome. Well, thank yeah. you very much for having me. And 
First of all, let me start by let me start this by thanking you guys, your organization, all the people, people I've never met before come out and support me this weekend for that catfish tournament. I am very humbled. You guys had a raffle for me, made quite a few hundred dollars. Also like to thank Adam Mahara for his custom made spoon that he auctioned off and donated the money to. Before I forget to do did we just lose him? <laughs> Jesus <Christ>. like, <laughs> we knew, we knew it. Okay. Are Dave, you there? Dave, yeah, don't we're press back. any button. <laughs> no, I, I keep, I keep getting a call. You got? Oh, you're getting still the prank phone calls. Dave, oh put God. your phone on do not disturb. I don't even know how. No, to no, do don't that. touch anything. Oh Dave. God, we'll get to that later. Uh, yes. Um. Oh, we won't. Yeah, we will, Dave. Dave, I, I know you said you said the same thing that that I probably would have said. Uh, you know, you didn't you didn't want any charity, you didn't want it, but like you know, people wanted to help you, and so we did. And and Laura Laura Yeats, uh, she set up this whole thing, and and it was, you know, it didn't matter whether you wanted it or not. People wanted to be a part of it. People wanted to help you, and that's and that's what we all did. You're not supposed to make me cry. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm so humbled. I love, you, I love each and every one is for what everybody done, man. I can't say no more. <laughs> I mean, I re- I d- the most of the fishing tournaments uh, of the modern, the, the ones now today that we fish in, I mean, 75 people is considered a fairly large tournament. This had 86. Fairly, I mean. This had 86 entries, so uh, this dwarfed most fishing tournaments that I fish in. So to see that many people come out, especially to a fishery they've never fished before. Uh, Kevin and Glenn and Max were out there uh, bouncing around where they didn't even really know. Uh, Fast Eddie was right there on shore. Well, Fast Uh, Eddie's a veteran of that river, too, but... Fast Eddie missed the winning fish by about an hour. Oh, today. God. We're going to make him relive this, I yeah. think. Uh, anyway, it's where the ball bounces. Yeah. No, hey, it, it's a it's a good fishing story. But, uh, yeah, Fast Eddie was, was fishing, what, maybe 30, 40 yards from us down the side on the shoreline there. And uh, and like I said, he, he knows what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing. And oh, he, he caught fished- him right away. Yeah, and and he caught a couple. They, they weren't big enough to to uh, weigh in, and he had to he had to take off. And he passed uh, Tony leaving, and within what fifteen twenty minutes of Tony taking the same spot and starting fishing where Eddie left off, he caught the winning fish. <laughs> Hats off to Tony on a great fish too, you know. Yeah, what, what was his last name? I forgot the last name. Tony Davis. He goes by Bethlehem Bay. He likes to broadcast Bethlehem Bay. Bethlehem Bay. Tony Bethel Davis. Bay. Bethel Bay. Yeah, that's his ammo. Okay. Oh well, yeah, congratulations to Tony, and it's a it's a cool story. <laughs> I told him when uh, when he won at at the Hutch over there. I I said, hey, you want to know the coolest part about uh, you winning this? My buddy just left there, and and we texted him and let him know that he just left the winning fish right. 10, 15, 20 minutes, maybe. Yep, that's the way it is. Yeah. I mean, now, I, uh, now, Dave, you know, uh, this is the multi species podcast, multi species mayhem. Uh, the flathead catfish is one fish I have never caught before. So it's not on my multi species resume, but now it is. Uh, yeah. you, you took me out and successfully, uh, got me to land my first flathead ever. Uh, so that's checked off, and it'll probably never be forgotten because um, it yeah. seems like a fish. I'm, I'm now. I'm interested in the fish, and uh, I'll remember it forever. Uh, uh, I caught my first flathead ever with Dave. That means more to me than me catching a fifty pounder. Trust me, because uh, that's uh, I've given right now for me. You know, I've been given enough. I've been trying to share my knowledge through the years. Anybody can tell you. People I don't know will message me on Facebook, and I tell them. Everything they want to know. I mean, I'm not. It's yeah, too yeah. Fellow over, they're all over the place. It's not like one honey hole where you kind of don't want to do that. But 
You know what I mean? And you know what, Dave? Like, Joe and I didn't... We This is the first time we met you fishing with you, meeting you fishing with you this tournament. Uh, just this past Saturday. And, uh, and I, I think I told you this before. I said, uh, the only thing I needed to know about you, Dave, from talking to you on the Facebook group and text messages and stuff, was that you invited us fishing before all this. You said, I I'll take you guys out flathead fishing. You know, we'll set up a date. We'll get, and that's all I needed to know about you. Anyone who's willing to take other, you know, otherwise exp we're exper experienced anglers, but not flathead fishing. Right. Anyone who's willing to take another angler out fishing and show them how to fish for something new or something a little bit different. I mean, that's all I need to know about you, Dave. Oh, appreciate the appreciate the kind words, I guess. Yeah. He's yes, like I, a he's basically like a fishing prostitute. Anyone that offers him fishing, he falls and he just instantly wins his heart. I I uh, mean, I don't say no to fishing. I mean, no. no. Well, now, Dave, Dave, what now? I I know we know you catch a lot of big stripers from the river, a lot of big walleye. What actually got you involved in uh, you saying, you know what, I want to start targeting these flathead catfish? Like, what what made you get into this? And then on top of that, you, I mean, you have to buy that boat too, which I'd never been on. I was kind of scared. I mean, the boat flies. That was a cool ride. It was I crazy. I have video on it. How'd you like that pitch black five mile ride through the rapids, guys? Huh? Fun, isn't it? I, I actually have video. I've only released video of one catfish catch, but I, do, I have video of the ride. And I remember staring over at Chris because the boat was flying down the river and we literally passed like a rock that was sticking five inches out of the water right to our right. I'm like, how deep is this? <laughs> oh, six inches. I'm like, Jesus, he's going 35 miles an hour. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, you said the jet boat could go over five inches of water, right? That's on a full plane, yeah. Uh, that's insane. And then when the tournament was finished, we did it back in the dark. <laughs> you notice I didn't let off the throttle all the way up the river? <laughs> no, you must know where every little stone is on that river because, holy shit. Well, at least from Milford to Belvedere, I got it covered. That's, that's, that's about a 15-mile stretch. So what what was like the thing that you what, what made you say okay I'm gonna get it because like I said it's an interesting fishery and uh, what made you get into this? Basically because I like big fish you know in our area like I've done the musky thing I've done that you know my biggest is 33 pounds which isn't a big fish but I've caught you know, I put over I put 44 on my boat one summer between me and friends just the river Oxford and uh, Mount Lake and that's how how long, how how long is a 33 inch fish just for like John Gabrini people that don't understand weight they like length it was 44 inches 33 and change pounds okay all right thank you it's a good fish but uh you know I like big fish. I stumbled upon the flatheads years and years ago before I think anybody even knew they were here because I didn't know what one was. And not long after that, I got a 26-pounder. And then after that, I'm thinking, well, they're here. So I started playing with them, and then I found pretty good, you know, a lot of 20. You, know, you catch a 20-pound catfish for the first time in your life. That's a big damn catfish. You and Mine then, was then, 24 pounds, and you repeatedly it was, called it small. And it's in the video, so don't try to deny it. <laughs> well, you know, I'm the seasoned veteran, okay? It's a nice fish. No, it's I think nice I, I remember. It's in the video. I, I literally go, come on, Dave. That's only small to you. Give me a break. Uh, I think... That's a nice fish. I'm a little. I disappointed. think also in the video I say, "Do you do we need the net?" And Dave says, "No, not for this, not for this." No, when I seen he was a twenty pounder, I didn't. I, usually, I'd pull him up to yank him out of water. I didn't want to lose the fish. I wanted at least to let you guys take a picture. And hey, if, if Tony wouldn't have got that fish, Chris would have won that tournament too. So yeah, yeah that we, fish. I mean, from what I saw posted, I mean that fish was second place, right? That was the second biggest no, fish. I mean. Yeah. Only three fish got weighed in. A 21, Chris's. Well, we didn't weigh fish. Chris is in. It was 24, you know. And, yeah, one, uh, once we, we got confirmation of of a 20 of the 28 pounder, 
we took one more nice pick at with the night pick and we and we let it go. It was, you know, it was stated it was in the water the whole time. It was totally fine. Oh, and those fish took yeah. Those things that? are apparently like impossible to kill anyway, right? I mean, you were set how long do those things live out of like you keep them damp and it's not too hot out, go live a couple hours, you can let them swim away. That's freaking crazy. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Yeah, because in the in the specific fishing tournament, if you if you brought a flathead into way and it did not swim away alive, the fish would not count, correct? That was the rule, yeah. None of these rules were made up by me, but I gotta agree with the rule. Yeah, I'm catch and release. So now you, but you, you think now that the Dave Aw Flathead tournament's going to become a yearly thing? It's already been in the. They've been talking about it. But hopefully, are. Uh, hopefully we can make it a cash prize, not a benefit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Can they, can they uh, still use your name at least? They, they were going. Well, they they call me the cat. Well, <laughs> what was he getting? If you moon me again, I swear to God, Dave. No, they call me the, the king. The king. Oh, these, they are the, can... these are the coasters they had made for me. The same guy who made the plaque that that plaque that Tony got. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Coast. Yeah, they call me the catfish king. It's it's just a ball busting kind of thing, you know. But they were going to I think they're going to call it the catfish king second annual. All so, right. I think they're na- they're specifically just naming this after him so he can't fish in it. <laughs> I would, I would exempt just to keep him that. out of it. No, I already told him if it takes place, I will not participate in a tournament to hunt named after. Well, what game. if it's just called the second annual Flathead Tournament? Then can you be an entry? You talk to your buddy Laura about that. Yeah, Joe. She makes all the rules. She did this time, and I thought she did a pretty good job. She did. Really she good. did. She did do a really good job. No, it was an awesome event. It was really cool. It was, and and then after uh, fishing ended, uh, the weigh-in was back at a bar called the Hutch that had a huge bonfire outside. We got to meet some other people from Mayhem that came there. Um, I know Cor- Corey Whitmore was there. Um, Who's Ch- Chase? Kevin. Yeah, Ma- Max and Kevin. I s- we met Chase uh, for the first time. Uh, we met Dave's girlfriend Carrie. Who else, Chris? So, uh, dude, I don't know anyone's yeah. name. I mean, Lou Swartz was there, but I already yeah, Lou Swartz. I got to meet. Um, there was other people. I don't remember everyone, but anyone new? I forgot your name already. Sorry. Yeah, I passed I passed Lou Schwartz on the mountain today, and he pulled up. I said, "What are you doing?" He says, "I'm going bear hunting." Boom! He took right off. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, dude, Chris, we, before, we've got uh, hold on. Joe got a got a bear on the trail cam, and the thing roughed the hell out of his cam. It's pointing in a different direction now. <laughs> but I don't think exactly, we're gonna. That's the trail camera you have by Ken Beam's house. Oh God, <laughs> Chris. Should we put Chris? Should we put him on the spot before we before he just loses it and co- comes off the air? If this tournament happens again next year, Chris, where how where are we gonna fish? What do you mean? Where are we gonna fish? We need a place to fish. What do you mean, like a boat to fish on? Yeah. I I mean I'll fish with Dave anytime. We don't know if we can get on Dave's uh, for the next one. We haven't been invited. You want him to invite you a year ahead of time? Yeah. You might piss him off over that's, the course that, of the year. That's a very good possibility, but there would be another person which y'all fish with. You know, y'all take turns like these guys did anyway, you know? Oh, boy. I have I have one good friend that, that was out of town and everything, so everything worked out perfect for us. Right, so you got lucky, Joe, or else it would have just been me, Dave, and his other buddy. That's no, why I'm trying to book him a year in advance. I I'm trying take, to put him on the spot right now. No, I can take three fish a minute. All right. So me, this other guy, and we'll find a third person. Uh, Dave, I don't know what to say. I can't I, I can't thank you enough. Um, even beyond this being like a tournament, not that I even gave a shit really about the tournament, uh, fishing with you was really unbelievable. 
I hope that you come fish with us and uh, come do some of the shit we do, but our fish are probably too small for you, I guess. Bait. Yeah, well, it's bait. I, you gotta, you know, you, you scale your, your gear to the fish. No, got, these guys well, don't I do that. I fish. I like to the late winter walleye fishing in the river between the ice flows and stuff. I'm getting kind of old. A little fatigued. Yeah, he, like, he said he likes the walleye fish. Yeah, on that you're river. Only, you're only interested in fishing the river then, or? Yeah, the river, river rat. Yeah, I mean, I've done all the hybrids, the northerns, the, the, the stripers, the, the trout, everything. Well, and here's that, a question. Uh, here's a question. So, you like the big fish. Do you, have, do you carp fish at all, or do you have any interest in that? I, they get pretty big. I have. I will once in a while. I've been down to a little spot with my eight pound test, medium spinning gear, and bang four or five big ones up. We all also right. have a we have a carb contest up at the Hutchins on uh, I think it's Labor Day. Yeah, every year we were having that for a long time now. That's small, just the locals, you know. But yeah. Well, all right. So we're but we're in for next year's tournament. It's me, Dave, and Dave's friend. Um, okay, okay. You, you don't invite yourself, but I, I will I, formally invite you, and Chris. Okay, thank you. I okay. just for the record, I didn't invite myself. This is on recording, and Dave cannot renege on it. It doesn't matter how I got on there. I'm now on there. Dave's a man of his word, brother. I think you guys know that. Dave, I don't know. uh, You know what? Let me ask you, just because I'm sure everyone wants to know and and just ask, how are you actually feeling? Uh, What's the outlook, and how how are you doing? Uh, Well, you know... For the guys that don't know, it was like almost seven years ago, I was diagnosed with a very rare form of blood cancer called mantle cell lymphoma. And uh, the doctor told me I had three months to live. And I said, I'm not good with math, but you're talking like 90 days. And she said, that's wow. cool. Very next day, they started me on intensive chemo, which ruptured my colon. I went septic. And I wore the shit bag and I got my stomach looks like a I got I stepped on a claymore, you know, but that's yeah. that kept me alive. Five years, a couple of months later, my routinely scans showed I was back again, which she told me it would come back. So now they're trying to just contain it for the time being and keep it from spreading with this oral chemo I've been taking, which is the the, the, the big farmers uh, sorry joke, you know, the money. It, it's yeah. Got good insurance, and I got a little bit of financial backing. So you know, and people like you. That's all I'm going. You know, keep like Chris. These- I'm I'm broke. Chris is rich. <laughs> yeah, I, probably, yeah, I wish. Probably, probably left your wallet in Chris's glove box. But anyway, yeah, you left, yeah, you, left you left a lot of shit in my in my truck, Joe. So Dave, uh, probably they'll end up keeping this contained, and you'll end up like getting hit by a car twenty years from now, dying from some other, st- or that jet boat will hit a rock twenty <laughs> years. From- That's the way I'd want to go. I'd yeah, that. something else. But Dave, thank you so much for everything. Thank you for taking us fishing. Thank you for be- having us uh, a part of this whole thing. And uh, anything we could ever do to help you, we will do. Absolutely. God bless you both. Thank you so much. Thank Dave, you. You're the man, Dave. Uh, keep enjoy. You, no one enjoys living life like you. I mean, you, you, I was laughing when Dave came on just real quick, and people were like, "Why is he laughing while Joe is introducing Dave?" Because we before we started recording, Dave just mooned us on the camera. He did. <laughs> oh no! Oh, cut. There it oh, is. Oh, Dave. Oh, all right. That's <laughs> it. Goodbye. That that Good time night. it was recording, Dave. So that's I going on YouTube. Goodbye, Dave. No, you Dave, want to love you, brother. But Joe wants your frontal. No, no, no. Do, <laughs> get get him out. Cut him off right now. Deuce, cut him. <laughs> that's unbelievable, uh, Dave. Uh, um, like I was talking about though before Dave came on, just so we don't take up too much time. Mark Madusky trip. Uh, Mark Madusky is supposed to come on here right now to discuss what went on in this DC trip. Yeah, I think he stopped he, responding. He has vanished. He's gone cold. The basic legit thing behind this was 
Madusky did a podcast years ago with another very popular outdoors uh, enthusiast. There was no video involved. It was just audio. They went down there. They caught nothing. Wait, wait a second. Uh, wait a second. That, that wasn't like a video? That no was, video. Audio the only. part was just audio? Well, during that time, which it was probably like 10 years ago, podcasts were all uh, audio only. So, yeah, he just recorded my, audio. My point is they could have just faked the whole thing. They could have, but, you know, Mark would, it, it, Mark always with those articles and stuff, if he faked it, it would just be dumb. But they got skunked, and uh, Mark has wanted for years to take the, another, the podcast, take us down and get revenge. Uh, we actually caught two fish. I mean, it wasn't a complete skunk. Just what we had to go through to get there. Oh, I God. came back. I came back from Sam River, which was five hours away. Uh, Chris worked all week, had to rush from work to get to Madusky, and then we had to obviously be back in time for this Dave Aw thing, which was almost. I mean, this Dave Aw thing between me and Chris together, it took what seventeen hours, probably, from me driving out. Yeah, and I mean, the, I mean, we weren't. There's no way we were going to miss that. Um, no. But I mean, hey, look, like we got to, you know, we, the three of us got to fish together. We went on a road trip. It's all good. But oh my God, like, and what, it, Listen, I, I know he's not here to defend himself, but who the fuck can drink that many five hour energies and monster energy drinks and still be alive? Listen, I absolutely love to break Madusky's balls till, till he's dead, but Coming home from this trip, I actually felt bad for him because he he was so excited. He he's so happy to be back in Jersey, have friends to fish with again. He's got all this shit planned. Uh, he went an extra hour out of the way to get a special bait. Um, he booked a hotel room, which I argued with him for hours. Like Mark, I don't want a hotel. Just go fishing. No hotel. Now I need a hotel. I need. We get to the hotel. I go to sleep immediately. Mark is sitting Indian style on the bed all night doing five hour power shots. Dude, I, you were asleep. You didn't see this, but you just got like, I, I didn't go to sleep as fast as you. You went right to sleep face down in the pillow. You're out. I stayed up a little bit because it was still a little early. And uh, and then we both kind of agreed like, all right, let's uh, let's hit the sack here. Let's get some rest. I hit the lights. I lay down. I start dozing off and I kind of, something kind of wakes me back up and he's just sitting there looking at us. And I'm like, you going to sleep, dude? Cause he wasn't even laying down. He was sitting I'm like, you're going to, you're going to sleep. Nah, you know what? Uh, he goes, I-, I can't sleep on an empty stomach. And he just gets up and he leaves. I'm like, okay. I, I, I remember, I do remember him leaving the room one time saying empty stomach. And then I never, I, I right. went to sleep. Yeah, yeah, that was that time. So then I fell asleep before he came back. I wake up again a couple hours later. I take a piss. He's still up. He's he's on his phone, like tweaking on the fucking energy drinks. And I'm like, dude, you're not going to sleep? And, uh, you know, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going to take a little nap. And I took this and I went back to sleep. I wait. Now we all wake up in the morning. It looks like someone ate a fucking sloppy chicken parm in the bathroom over the sink. And I go, dude, what the hell happened? Oh, you know, he didn't want to turn the lights on and wake us up. So he ate a hot pocket in the bathroom in the middle of the night. And something else. I don't even remember. Like, the dude didn't sleep. Mark did not sleep. He basically went down in a flaming ball of uh, he just went down in a flaming ball of failure. I mean, actually, it was better than the other podcast because we actually did catch two fish, which I have on video. I'm so behind on videos, but I'm getting them out slowly. Um, but, yeah, I will release all the video from Virginia and D.C. But, yeah, yeah I, it wasn't a complete failure, but I just think he was so amped up and he got destroyed. No, you know what? 
he's he I don't think he had fished there in a while, even though what did he move about a month ago? But I don't think he had like, well, he's getting ready to move. He hadn't been fishing. I don't even know when the last time he had fished there was. And it just seemed like maybe something something must have changed or something because he was sure the conditions were perfect. And yeah, he, he was amped up. I mean, he babe roofed it like that musky that me that we he caught. Did. And uh, yeah, it's always very dangerous to talk shit about fishing, any kind of fishing, because I, I won't do it. I, I usually don't. It's very risky to call out something like that. Like when Kevin get Glenn guaranteed he'd win the Grand Slam from shore of Spruce Run I mean, and just totally failed. That, yeah, nobody thought that was actually going to happen. But Well, when, it was brazen, though. It was brazen to make the claim. Yeah. On I a mean, side note, uh, we're continuously being bothered for more content of Max and Kevin. They have, like, their own little cult following within our thing, so... You're going to start to see a lot more separate content from little Max and Kevin because they're going to start uh, working more with us now because they have their own groupies. Um, did I it... think there's people actually that they, they, they don't like us. Like they, they send emails and they're like, well, I'm, we're just here for Max and Kevin. That's fine. So we're going to give them more Max and Kevin. Yeah, I don't, I don't need anybody to like me. That's fine. No. We're fun. Yeah, I think whatever. Max, uh, they have like the weird people within the group probably. You know what I just realized though? What's we that? let Dave go without busting his balls about those prank calls he was getting while we were fishing. Dave just showed his naked ass on my podcast. So yes, I'm gonna So the backstory of that, what Chris is talking about, during the catfish tournament, someone put Dave Law's phone number in prankdial.com. Uh, the first phone call... Now, Dave's not good with technology and doesn't like phones, so we're sitting there in the dark fishing. The first phone call is a person saying that Dave left a note on their car because he hit the car or something, and Dave's screaming at it. I mean, I could hear it's just a recording, and so could Chris, but I guess Dave doesn't realize it's a recording. He's screaming at it. Hangs up the phone. I mean, I think he figured it out after the first one, but it was still... I don't know about after the first one, because the second one was like somebody was <laughs> telling him that he kicked their dog, and he was fighting with that one. I'm like, Dave, it's the same app. It's another record. He's fighting. He's screaming at the thing that he's going to murder it. It's, a, it's just a record. So whoever did this did it all night. Now, the phone wouldn't stop. Dave's trying to get the bait out of the boat, unpacked, but phone keeps ringing. It won't stop ringing the whole night. I mean, I hit record on the GoPro a couple, on a couple of those. It was too funny. I have him on the GoPro. And then he gets around. And then he gets back to the hutch where the weigh-in is. There's a room of all these people waiting to see him, and he's walking around, watching him walk around. The phone's still ringing. It's in his pocket ring. The entire party for four hours in the thing, it's ringing in his pocket. He can't answer it. It's the same prank dial over and over again. So we will have that vit footage out, too. Dave Law versus the Machines. Uh, that will be released. Uh, Max and Kevin have a new hybrid striped bass trolling video out. Um, yeah, do we have is max coming on tonight if you can get him in here he wants to fight me because i said he was crying uh, I think he wanted, well yeah i think he wanted to defend himself and uh and i mean that i i did want to ask him about that hybrid trip him and him and kevin did as well he, he did text me that he yeah the hybrid trip i'm hearing a rumor that there's a picture on my facebook page of him holding a fish he didn't catch is that true? Wait, what? say that again? There's a rumor that there's a picture of him holding a fish on Facebook that he didn't catch. Is that true? The salmon, right? He didn't catch any salmon. Oh, no, I'm talking about the hybrid. He's holding two hybrids in one picture, but he only caught one. So why is uh, he holding? Oh, I thought they caught four. Here, bring, uh, let me get him on here. Okay. Let's clear this up. Pretty sure they only caught three. So I think now this, I forgot about the salmon. So now there's no. two. If they only caught three, then why is there two pictures of, there's a picture of Kevin he holding want, a double and there's listen, a picture of Max holding a double. Hold on a second. Max thinks no, no, that no, no, this no. is the no. bar stool of sports and he wants to be famous here. No. That's what, 
no, you were you talked shit about him last time without him being here to defend themselves. So at least wait till he comes on. Chris, I didn't talk any shit. I told the true story of his emotion. Yeah, but when you breakdown. tell a story about someone and they're not there to give their version of it. Okay. Get Max right. in here. All right. Okay, so Max Wilson's coming in here to defend his honor. We did just talk about how Max and Kevin are going to become a bigger part of this. Uh, Max, you're here tonight to defend your honor because uh, apparently I made a comment about you crying. (laughs) And Chris has some questions about a fish. All right. So... All right, Max. First of all, that's not totally true. Joe was about to start talking crap about you again without you here to defend yourself. And all I said was, let him at least come in and be here so that he can defend himself. Because And and Joe claimed his story was 100% true. But I I mean, when you've got someone telling a story about someone else, I don't ever 100% believe it. So we want to hear your side of the story. As far as the one, uh, why is Joe claiming that you caught zero salmon? No. There's a picture of you holding a salmon. And two. I'm not involved uh, in the salmon, Max. What are you talking about? (laughs) You told me. I have nothing to do with that. Landed zero salmon. No, he told you that himself, not me. I've been set up. That's all I got to say. I I hooked and I fought like 30 something fish. I had one. I chased it all the way down the river over boulders. I took a hook in the back, some Oswego crackhead, pulled it out, and I kept going. Got, got the fish. I found some guy willing to net it. He had it in the net, knocked the fly out, and hit it in the tail. It, ah, the fish took off. It was a totally different ball game. He tried to net it again. He lost it. That was it. That was my only one chance of actually landing one because Joe was rushing me the whole time, and we forgot the net, and I forgot my cleats as well. And I'm sure you saw the video of me getting ready outside of the truck, you know. Yeah, but uh, I didn't successfully land any. I got a lot to leader. I I made the run. I did the trek. I, I ate shit. I slid down the boulders. It was a war zone, man. They were like, I must have ran past 100 people in like 200 yards going over their heads, dodging equipment. You know, it was, it was nuts. But I didn't so you- actually land any. And then Fast Eddie gave me a fish to take home because you didn't want it. <laughs> and then we were leaving. That was, that was a fish to <laughs> eat. As to eat, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Joe's like, all right, take a picture. I take a picture of Joe. And then he's like, all right, let me get one of you. And I was like, what? And he's like, no, nah, I won't tell anyone. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> so he takes a picture of me. And I'm like, all right. And I curl my mustache with a little, little fish slime before the picture. He loved it. Right, Chris, and, uh, he did leave. pause that. He, he did was pause me. For, for like an hour. You know? He paused me when I had the camera in my hand and said, "Please let me fix my mustache." As he curled it more, and I, I just was sick. Yeah, yeah I went finger salmon, and I okay gave it a little twirl. <laughs> All right, so you felt. I but mean, as soon as we, he told me he texted you or you texted me like, like "Oh, I heard you didn't catch any fish." So, so fast that he gave you awesome. a fish to eat and you felt the need to take pictures with it. So move on to the next question. Joe. Okay, okay, okay. So now the the whole crying story, Joe claims that you broke into tears. No, there were no actual tears. There was no water. Already changing. Do you see what happens when you bring other people in that were there? The story changes already. Well, there were no tears. Like there wasn't water tears. You you said that it was it was like a hot one. it was like a it was like a Hollywood cry you know like one of those no no water but he was crying so that is true but you I didn't... told Joe I I did not cry no no tears were shed for my eyes but I did tell Joe on the drive back after being awake for twenty six hours straight completely exhausted. How much I appreciated everything, how great mayhem was, and you know how much I love the whole community, and you know it. It just means a lot because it's brought me a lot of friends. And so my I've story's true. Grown a lot. He's gonna fucking cry you right know? now. <laughs> oh, that's all I'm I said. Crying. I, I no am. Cr- I'm literally crying. I'm <laughs> yeah. crying. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh my Max. god. 
He's Max, crying. it's all cool. We're just busting your balls. But uh, the hybrid trip you and I Kevin, know. you and Kevin had on. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. You guys, you guys did pretty good the other day. You were trolling. Yeah, we had a good time, man. We went out. We, uh, you know, we don't entirely know what we're doing. We're just trying to figure it out. And uh, I went up to Dow's, got some bait, and we, you know, we went back. I made the trip. You know, I'm not too far, but I got there. And uh, we immediately got out. We got the planer boards all set, hooked up right away. It was pretty cool. <laughs> and then we trolled around a bit, hooked up again. It was great. You know, I had the GoPro going. We got a cool video. And we were, there wasn't as much stuff in the boat as there was during the Flathead tournament. So we could maneuver around a little bit. How many hookups? Um, did you, how many did you catch? What did we get? Three? Three. Three. Yeah, <laughs> it was nice. No, you had at least they four. Were... No, I think we got three. <laughs> we, we might have had one at the boat, no. but we lost it. I'm not sure you remember. No, <laughs> I think there was two <laughs> pictures. There was two pictures, one of Kevin holding a double header and one of you holding a double header. That's four hybrids. Oh, it was four. I don't know. Every time I go out on Kevin's boat, I get shit drunk. <laughs> hold on, so. hold on. Deuce. But I... Deuce, are time. you there? Okay. You guys, you need a minute? All right, hold on. <laughs> We've okay, got so Kevin in here now. Uh, you got to let Deuce have a chance to bring Kevin in. But uh, the, what, yeah, what the, the question at hand is, there's a picture on Facebook of Kevin holding two hybrids, and there's a picture of Max holding two hybrids. But there was only three fish oh. hooked. We're, we're trying to figure out where the fourth fish came from. But we need yeah. Kevin in here. Chris, am I right? Yeah, so Deuce is going to bring no, Kevin in. I, I, we must have caught four fish. Wait, <laughs> we got to watch the video. How many videos are there? Because I didn't have the GoPro rolling for one of them. And um, I don't know. I got to look on my cloud. But I'm pretty sure it's four. I just, I don't know. I drank like a pint of whiskey every time we go out. So <laughs> It had to be four because how else would you get two double header pictures? Yeah, yeah, we hit our limit. And. That's what it was. We hit our limit, and Kevin called it right away. Your limit? And what were he, you? I was like, no. What? You hit your Where? limit? What, were you stock trout fishing? Where no, you, what no. is it? Two apiece? Yeah, I, I, think you can, I think you can keep two hybrids yeah. apiece. Two apiece. So you did. Yeah, so we caught our four. four. Yeah, we caught our four. Kevin right, took think, home three. I, I think we're going to have Kevin one. on here in a second. Yeah. Yeah, Kevin, unmute yourself. Please. Unmute You're yourself, Kevin. There you go. All right. Yeah, Kevin, can you hear us? I can hear you. Yeah, so we were at, Max was telling us about the hybrid trip you guys had, and uh, but he couldn't remember how many hybrids you guys caught. I said it had to be yeah, four here. because I, there were two pictures of each of you holding a double header. No, it was three because it got to a point it where it was getting dark relatively soon and if we had started trolling back to the launch then it was going to time out well and i vividly remember still trolling back to the launch because max did not have his limit <laughs> and if we look at me for crappy in on those hybrid i think we can prove that i mean it was a beautiful fish i understand why max wanted to take a picture with it so he took a picture <laughs> so, of your fish again? Oh my yeah. God. Yeah, he Kevin, took a picture. Just before you came in, we were discussing the claims of Max. Fast Steady felt bad for Max, and he handed him like a dead salmon that he found on the side of the river. Max decided to take photographs with it before he ate it. Um, so his uh, he's now gaining a reputation of taking pictures with other people's fish. That's what's going on here. I knew yeah. this is a bad idea. You guys are the masters of setups. There's also a horrifying rumor of going around of him being just infatuated with Fast Eddie. I think Fast Eddie's starting to get uncomfortable when Max is around. I don't know what that's about. So there's a lot of backstory to this. Uh, Max, we're going to have oh, to geez. find out more about it. 
Kevin, oh, man. Uh, did you did you catch that play. sailfish behind you, or did someone just give that to you and you had it mounted? <laughs> no, that one was given to me. That one, I did not catch that. <laughs> At least he admitted that. <laughs> that was have you ever my, been out fishing? Stuff. Have you ever been out fishing and seen someone else catch a nice fish and had it mounted and put it on your own wall? No, Actually, that's the only mount. I, no, and that's, that's new. My yeah. girlfriend hates it. It's right above my bed. <laughs> Do you have any response at all to the Fast Eddie love uh, allegation things? Uh, Fast Eddie's the man. I mean, I don't, I don't not love him. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Is it true that you totally <laughs> disregarded? No, that's why he's out. Is it true that you totally disregarded Dave Oz catfishing spot and risked your life just to fish within the same vicinity as Fast Eddie during the catfish tournament? Yeah, so Kevin said it was the first island, and I said, I don't think that's, you know, a lot. I don't really think it's an island. So we got confused in, uh, on our, our locations, and we, we wound up uh, going through some pretty treacherous rocky water to <laughs> get wound up going where... Uh, I thought we were supposed to go. Wasn't really the place to go, you hey, know. Hey, look, listen, but, uh, listen, it was Max. two miles up river. Pretty dangerous. <laughs> now, Kevin, Kevin is a great captain, and he got you there alive. He caught you some fish, oh, yeah. and he got you back alive. And maybe he dressed like the Gordon's fisherman and looked kind of weird. But <laughs> you know what? He's a great captain, and you should be thanking him. And Kevin, I know you're at work, uh, but thank you for coming on and clearing up this story. <laughs> Real Does quick. Kevin have time to discuss the skillful angler channel catfish he launched back into the river? Because having some time to think about it, I completely understand my actions, letting that fish just walk. You regret it? So one of you guys likes taking pictures with other people's fish, and the other one just likes catching <laughs> huge fish and throwing them back without having them checked in. All right, so Joe... What happened on that boat was I caught that huge channel, I weighed it, and then I panicked. I was worried Max might try to take a picture with it. And <laughs> back in the river. Now I understand. See, I would do the same thing because Max will. Is there if a per- I couldn't let him have that? I had to get rid of that fish as quick as I could. Oh, that's terrible. I agree. You made the right that's move. Cool. <laughs> if anyone fishes with Max, throw your fish oh, back immediately. He will photograph them. Dude, Guys, no, thank no, you no, both no, for coming no, on no, here. No, I want both of you out of here immediately. <laughs> Have a good night, guys. Oh, Thanks you're the worst, dude. Up. Max, good, say good night yeah. to Fast Eddie. It's getting late. Deuce, get rid of oh, him. Good night, Fast Eddie. <laughs> there, good night. Sleep good, Eddie. Max loves you. Yeah, get rid of him, too. Okay, good. They're all gone. All right, that's it for this. Did I lose Chris, too? No, uh, we have the hi- uh, Saturday's the hybrid meet and greet on Lake Pacon. The weather doesn't look too good, but the weathermen are, have been wrong. Yeah. And I think if that gets rained out, the rain date is Sunday, which the weather also doesn't look good for that. Yeah, I don't think I can make that the rain date on that anyway. But uh, I think we're also on a time limit because I, you know, as the time goes on, this lake's getting lower and lower now. Yeah, uh, so they, they uh, you know, the guys moved it up originally, I think, to try to get it in before the lake got even lower. Um, but anyone with a, you know, medium to large size boat is is going to, it's going to start. One, one it's going to be really hard to launch the boat in a lot of spots. Um and two, it's going to be dangerous to navigate the lake if you don't know it, which like these meet and greets have a lot of guys that aren't familiar with the lake. Um, just for people that don't know, the NJF hybrid meet and greet, it's just everyone goes to Lake Apacon. Everyone launches from Lees County Marina. We all go out to the same spot. It's usually somewhere from 20, 30 boats and just drop bait straight down uh, for hybrids and just bullshit all day. It's a good time. Yeah. Uh, if you want to come out and meet people, it's a great time uh, just to come hang out. If you have any questions or concerns, you could reach out to Mikey K or Fast Eddie. They're both uh, moderators for NJF. Yeah, Next and- week is Jerry Zagorski is the guest on the podcast, uh, right? 
That's correct. Yeah, we got we got Jerry Zagorski on uh, next is week. Jer- do you know, is Jerry going to the meet and greet? I know he planned on it, at least on the original date. I'm not 100% sure he was still going to be able to make this date. I know he, he always tries to go. He's He's been at most of the ones I can remember. Uh, he usually, and he's, he, I think he only has a saltwater boat. So he, he jumps in with Mikey or Eddie or, or one of those guys. And, uh, just to be clear, most of the information about this is on njfishing.com on the forum. It's pinned to the top of the freshwater forum side. And so the, that thread is there. Um, obviously we, we repost it into the mayhem fishing Facebook page, um, but yeah, that that's where the main thread of information is on, on this. Okay, uh, I'm gonna do my usual thing. Uh, me and Chris just went from Salmon River to Washington D.C. and then back out to the Delaware River. I am pumping out tons of video and tons of content. Please hit the subscribe button. That's what keeps us going. It's what keeps the show going. Uh, as you could see, Max Wilson from how he was just crying again. Uh, this actually means a lot to a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people have become really good friends over this, and it's created a lot of new bonds. Uh, so it is becoming really important to people. I need you to hit the subscribe button uh, to keep going, and uh, it seems to be harder than expected. Just hit the fucking subscribe button. Christ's sake. Driving all over. Hit the subscribe button. Jerk offs. I don't even think I did on my personal account. Yeah, just make some then. Make new emails and just hit subscribe. Uh, We'll be back next week with Jerry Zagorski from NJ Fishing. Uh, If you have any questions from Jerry, email them to us before next Monday. Today's Thursday. uh, This is on. So, yeah, you got five days for Jerry questions. Uh, Chris, do you want to say goodbye or are you going to be rude? Are you done talking? I'm done. I never know when you're done begging for subscribers, so I just kind of sit and wait. Well, you know, they just don't get it, you know, and I just keep working harder and harder, and they just don't, they don't, they just Maybe don't Maybe do they it. don't like us that much. Well, then don't watch it. Get off it. Who's watching this? I know for a fact John Grabogludi watches this every, every week it comes oh, yeah. out, and he hates you. He hates me, this guy. Now, he's inboxing me. From the last episode, he's like inbox me, wants to fist fight me over this fly fishing thing. It was like, I'm getting these messages, Joe. You're an, you don't know what you're talking about. Wild trout are stupid. Fly rods suck. Like I'm like oh, I don't have to. This was this was coming in while we were on the road. I don't oh. know why John won't just come on the show. I'm, that was I'm my on re- your side, John. That, w- that was my response to him, John. Just come on the show, but he doesn't. He just goes back and posts no, his in, in all, picture in with all. Joe Bergen. And all serious, Joe Bergen too. I don't think he won't. He won't come talk to us either. The ninja? No, nah, the ninja don't do interviews. Ninja don't talk to no one. But in all seriousness, like we are going to do this this trout experiment. Like Joe and I are going to fish together in a in as many New Jersey trout rivers and streams that we can get on over the course of months and months like like we're gonna and we're gonna i'm gonna ultralight spin fish he's gonna fly fish and we're we're not going against each other we're we're gonna do this as scientifically as possible we're gonna like try to help each other stay even fish for fish fly fishing versus ultralight spin fishing and we're gonna you know, make some conclusions that are as close to scientific as possible when you have all these variables to deal with. But if anyone else, like, like if John wants to participate in this, like you come, come with Joe, you spin fish against Joe fly fishing too. Like, and if anyone I'm else, not I'm not going with him. Why? I don't like him. Because you know, spin fishing is better. No, it's not. I'm going. Listen, you said it's not going to be a competition. I am going to prove it wrong. I'm going. I'm going to beat it. I'm going to beat the system. Yeah, uh, we'll see. But if anyone wants to be a part of it, I mean, like, if you want us to to fish a particular river or something that we aren't necessarily 
getting to or something like we're we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna share it all like we're not spots we're not gonna share spots we're not gonna tell you oh we're on this river here you know but we're gonna hit different types of rivers and what about it now now what about this fall when when we go up to fish the tributaries of ontario uh are you willing to fish for giant brown trout and steelhead on a spinning rod I, I would actually like to try it. I'd like to see for myself the difference. Yeah. You are going to get, you have no chance. Zero. Um, I didn't say I'm going to only bring my spinning rod and guarantee beat you. I'm, I've only done it fly fishing that, that fishing. But I'm curious if I can replicate it with a, with a long spinning rod. I had to, uh, almost for, for the whole salmon trip I because I'm not, I had to help my kids hook salmon and they're using spinning setups um okay. I was having I was having major problems like it was a major disadvantage uh even my wife was like because I, I could literally throw the spinning rod down grab the fly rod and I had a fish on right away on one cast I'm just casting over and over with the um I it's a it's a horrible struggle up there. Uh, even though that's not even really fly fishing though, but it, I, you have giant split shots on the line. So it's really not fly fishing. That's a whole nother conversation. Uh, this, uh, the episode's over. We'll see everyone next week. The fly fishing thing is going to go on, but it's going to take a very long time to watch Chris lose. No, I mean, we can keep people updated, like, as we're doing it, but the whole entire final product, and I don't think, just to be clear, I don't think the final product is going to be, oh, ultralight spin fishing is better in every single scenario, every time, always, it's the best, throw your fly rod in the fucking garbage in New Jersey, or vice versa. Neither, none of, that's not what's going to happen here. It's going to be more of, like, um, a seasonal like oh this time of the year this during this part of the day or this this river and that river there's going to be a lot of conclusions i think but ultimately i do believe that ultralight spinning is the more effective way to catch trout in new jersey if i didn't think if if you prove me wrong i i will fly fish i will start fly fishing in new jersey but I've done both, and I don't believe it to be true. I can't even believe what you're even saying. I, I'm uh, not doing this to try to beat you or even really prove it. I'm curious. I want to know which method is more effective in New Jersey. I would say if you – realistically, if you work – if you're talking about like a trout club, like – the um obviously depending on the time of year may and june's el- immediately el- eliminated because the spinning rod has zero chance um the trout club of stocked fish like that uh the spinning rod will do better it, a- outside no it's not gonna no way so you're saying that the fly rod will only shine on wild fish but you didn't you didn't even know there was wild brown trout last What episode. do you mean wild fish? No, wild fish doesn't matter. But the wild fish will eat anything. They're aggressive as hell. We just said the stocked fish, the ultralight's better. From my own experiences, when I fish through like those private clubs, I've been out fished by spinning rods, but they're using live bait. Uh, well, but I also not, live bait is not. Part I know of that, there. but I also know that uh, a lot of times when a person works through a hole with a blue fox or a jig, and then you try to go through it with a fly, the fish are they've already been spooked by the metal heads. Uh, it's it's kind of ruined. But yeah, that's the only time I really ever seen it. You, I, I don't know where everyone like well, that... Justin Lerner said. Oh, you'll never completely i have to disagree because it's just ridiculous uh i'll tell you i mean look um the way we're gonna do it you're never gonna be in a scenario where i spook the fish because we're gonna rotate in as scientific a manner as possible so like if i caught the last fish 
you're going to have free range for, uh, you want to drift, drift this pool for a couple minutes, Joe. And then you take, I just stand back. You don't get anything after a few drifts. You say, I don't know, maybe not, I'm not getting anything there. Then I step in with a jig. Maybe if I pull two fish out of there, now we don't just jump and say, ah, oh, spinning's better. Now I say, all right, well, Joe, I'm using a, a black jig. So maybe you want to change your fly to a black fly and drift it a couple more times. Now you don't get anything. So we move up. Now, since I caught the last two fish on a, on a black jig, the next spot we get to, you have first dibs again with a black fly. And now you can try, uh, you know, maybe you get a couple. Now maybe it's we're back a, it, even. It's a whole nother episode in itself. We don't have time no. for it. But I, I'm just saying from it, what I'm trying to say, I guess, from my experience, uh, a simulated trout fishery, the spinning rod works better. Uh, a real trout fishery, like in the Carolinas, uh, I don't know why you're keeping cat this skills. Is New Jer- this about New Jersey trout, period. Well, New Jersey only stocks rainbow trout. Uh, I mean, it's kind of lame to like even well, use, but you've got you've got this the New Jersey stock rainbows. Fine, that is pretty stupid. I, I wish they'd go back, but whatever. You got pr- pr- plenty of private entities all over the place stocking browns and their own rainbows and tigers, whatever. You've got native brook trout uh you've got wild browns in plenty of places i mean what are you saying you're saying the fly rod can only beat the spinning on the native brook trout the fly rod the only real trout fishery we have here the advantage of a fly rod itself is it gives the natural presentation of the bait it presents the bait the exact way the fish is eating in nature. Uh, the spinning rod doesn't do that. Uh, that's the fly rod's biggest advantage. But if the fish itself is not a trout yet, and it's not acting like a trout, uh, it won't respond correctly. Uh, so trout like to always fi- trout sit in the water facing upstream, and they usually don't move. They'll only move a couple inches left or right. They're eating nymphs that are rolling by stuff that's coming up out of the rocks. And then when a hatch comes on, they're hitting the surface. That's what they eat. I, I think you're giving trout way too much credit. And I think no, you because are... you're you're going off the simulated trout. You need to spend more then, time. Then seeing you would be able, trout. Then you would be able to destroy spin fishing on wild brown trout fisheries that we have. I don't think wild brown trout fisheries matter, like I said, again, because you throwing a Rapala and me throwing a woolly bugger is the same thing. That wild trout are aggressive. The Catskill fish aren't wild. I mean, there's wild fish, but that's a stocked fishery, but they don't stock like New Jersey does every week. They stock once like a month. It sounds to me that you're admitting that ultralight spinning is better for no. New Jersey trout. No, not for stocked rainbow trout, no. No way. I, I'll, I'll guarantee that if you fish a, a trout stocked water for Jersey trout stocked rainbows, I'll outfish anyone with a fly rod. 100%. You're, you're, I you're, just said earlier in the episode. Out of everyone listening, because you're, you're making my head spin. You're, you don't understand what real trout fishing is. You've only seen this simulation of trout fishing that New Jersey created. No, that's yes. false. I've gone no. trout fishing. Bring Joey extra York. long name on here or someone that knows what they're, they're going to tell you because uh, even Califano. You could argue about it all day long. That's why we're going to do this experiment. Okay. All right. Good night. And I hope John helped me with this guy. Good night. Please, John. Please fucking you help me. You can't help him, John. Please.